Welcome back to Frost Education. This is Zed. Today we're going through a couple of things, mainly looking at their 10k, their earnings, whether it's in year or quarter, and looking over their estimates that they did while they were a SPAC to see whether they actually are meeting those estimates or not. I'm also going to discuss the outlook and the long-term implications of what we've learned today. Let's jump right into this one. So XL, this one here, if you haven't heard about it, it has four different operations, XL Hybrid, XL Plugin, XL Link, and XL Grid. And to sum it short, basically what they do is they have different operations and it basically changes stuff in vehicles. I'm just saying stuff just to make it very general for people who aren't uh, familiar with vehicles such as this one. And they basically have chases or uh, they change the parts itself to make it either a hybrid or an EV plugin, as well as they do provide Excel Grid, which is charging stations and Excel Link. I did cover so many of these videos before regarding what Excel Fleet does, so you'll have to watch the previous ones. But today's focus regarding two things, the recent highlights, and then we're going to start picking on whether these estimates are in fact there or not, some of the risks while holding Excel based on them themselves, and we're going to dive a bit here and there. So full year in recent highlights, they generated revenue for full year in 2020, that's around $20.3 million which is in a result an increase of 182% versus $7.2 million in the prior year. Generated revenue for the fourth quarter of 2020 of $10.9 million compared to $0.3 million in the prior year. And they shipped around 1,537 total systems during 2020, including 837 systems in the fourth quarter alone. So reported a gross profit for full year in 2020 of 2.7 million, reflecting a gross margin of 13.5 million, 13.5%, my bad and reported gross profits for the fourth quarter 2020 off two million dollars completed business combinations yada yada we're gonna move on uh oh it's also achieved over 4300 cumulative hybrid and plug-in hybrid systems sold throughout 2020 and some of the outlooks here that they do mention, but I'm going to go through my own outlooks in a second. They believe that the long-term outlook for the commercial fleet market remains robust with continued growth demand for electrification and our expanding base solution. The world is electrifying. However, it cannot, economies, businesses around the world continues to face the ongoing impacts of COVID-19. In the first quarter of 2020, the revenues are approximately $1 million or roughly flat versus prior year quarter. Given this ongoing uncertainty, the potential for extended industry-wide issues combined with typical seasonal patterns in order and a significant majority of revenues focused on the second half as prior years were not currently providing a format full year 2021 financial guidance, as this will pressure abate and we expect to see stronger market environments emerge later this year. In this scenario, we would expect to realize significant revenue growth in 2021, accompanied by even more pronounced seasonality and therefore weighted in the second half of the year so okay all that sounds good amazing it looks like 2021 in the second half that will be bullish but i'm gonna start picking on a couple of things here and there uh of course we're gonna look into their outlets but keep in mind here as well their estimates so we're gonna look into that in a second but before we do so I'm going to dive quickly into some of the risks that they associated in their 10Q and 10K. Now, before doing so, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell button as well. And if you'd like to join our Discord, it's totally free. You can ask me questions over there. It's in the description below. And so if we were to look into this one here, there's some risks that they do associate in terms of risk factors, and these are just general risks that you need to understand. So we may, we may become subject to product liability claims, so that's normal. We may not be, be able further to penetrate the fleet market or enter into new markets in the future. Okay, understandable. We rely on a limited number of customers for a large portion of our revenue, and loss of one or more such customers could have a material adverse impacts on our business financial conditions and in results operations. Now that is a red flag that I do hope that they do go ahead in the future and prove that. But basically, that is the main thing I wanted to hold on. The rest is required continued capital, uh, liabilities exceeding assets. They fail to, if they fail to manage, uh, they might have to sell their company, etc. But that's normal. Now this is here in 2021 and 2022, and this piece of information says in the future. 
We intend to leverage our strong OEM and upfitter partnerships, internal engineering expertise, and broad customer base to bring electrification solutions to the market. These include a wide array of available chases options, deeper relationships with current and future OEM partners, and an expansion of our electrification suite to include electrical vehicles, EV, and potentially hydrogen fuel cell enabled system. We expect to develop proof of concept prototypes of these systems in 2021 and introduce such systems for sale between late 2021 and late 2022. And so we plan to offer charging and power management solutions, such as solutions are expected to include charging stations, on-site energy storage and power generation, as well as system management. This offering will be branded as Excel Grid, and we expect to work with a range of partnership to provide consolidation comprehensive offering. We formally launched Excel Grid in December 2020. Further on, we have unique opportunities to leverage our hardware, software, and energy industry partnerships to potentially launch EAAS offering, such as an offering bundle vehicles. XEV powertrains, charging infrastructures, power and energy supply, and other services for our customers to provide an easy and low risk transition to fleet electrification and emission reduction. And we anticipate to offer the EAAS to select customers in the beginning of 2021. So that's another, perhaps another PR coming in down the line. And another thing that I do want to talk about is their customers. So in their 10 years of existence, they have served over 200 end use customers deploying over 4,300 systems. These systems have combined use in real world applications in excess of 140 million miles as of December 31st, 2020. And our end customers most often purchase our systems from upfitters OEM dealerships or participants in our sales channel who are in our direct customers. Our end users base is compromised of Fortune 500 corporates and enterprises, public utilities, and municipalities of all sizes, a group that we estimate to operate over a million vehicles globally. And they continue to develop class two to six options and class seven to eight is continued to be developed. Now, next thing here is they expect 2021 to follow typical customer seasonal purchasing patterns. In the fourth, third and fourth quarter of the year, they expect more than 80% of their sales to be recognized in the second half uh, of 2021, similar to what happened in 2020. And so that's some things to keep in mind. Institutions have been somewhat um, not very active. It's still remains the same from my last video. And now comes to the important stuff, the estimates and if they actually reached it. So a quick thing, 2019 actual, you're looking at $7.2 million and an EBI TDA of 13.1 with a gross profit of uh, 0.9, negative. And you see that that is in fact on par from what we're seeing here. And in terms of the EBI TDA, it's the adjusted one, okay? So keep that in mind. And what we're looking here in terms of the estimated 2020 revenue, you're looking at 21 million. So let's see if that was actually in fact, yes, I would say around, they're sure around 700,000 or short of that. So you know what? We're going to give it to them. Okay. You got it. Uh, cost of goods sold 18.6. Yeah, it's on par. Still the same thing. Gross profit 2.4. You know what? That was actually beat. Good job. The next thing lost from our, no, we're going to move on all the way to adjusted EBI TDA. This is 14.67. Whoops, it's 9.9 .9 negative here. So they fell on that pretty hard. Now, the part of that as well, if we were to take a look at it, is that the loss of operations selling general administrative expenses might be higher than usual. So we see that right off here. So if they were to decrease it back again, they would probably would have met their estimates. Now, a big part of this one and why I'm highlighting it is 2021. This is supposed to be the year where they multiply the company more than around three times more, almost going, going on as far as four times more. You're looking from uh, 21 million revenue to 75.3 million revenue. And a big reason why that is important is because by 2022, they were hoping to go positive net revenue. And part of that is they need to go almost around, well, you're going from 281 to uh, 20, 21 million. So you're not only even going 10 times more, you're going multiple times more, almost around 13 or 14 times more your revenue by 2022 
to hit that net positive. And so far, I mean, in terms of revenue, yes, we see that. In terms of gross profit, yes. Although EPI DTA, no. And a big part of it goes towards administrative costs. And we need to see them reducing it through the year. Now, we've seen the highlighted information with COVID-19 uh, spreading now. 2021 might be skewed to the second half. And that's a little bit of a dangerous zone for the first quarter and the second quarter. Things might look interesting later on. And now we can move on towards technical analysis. Now, with the technical analysis, there's two things that I do want to really focus on. Uh, one day perspective, which we see that this has gone towards a negative side, especially with today's news, a new low, a new 52 week low for this company, MACD going negative, and almost every indicator will tell you it's going bearish, including a death cross. That's where the 50 SMA, or a death star, my bad, that's where the 50 SMA drops down uh, while the 200 SMA stay, stays fixed, and that's usually an indication for a continuation of the negative strong trend. But let's take a look into a couple of things. Well, we can take a look at the moving average that will show you dropping down. Stochastic slow will tell you sell and be careful. And it's very important, and crucial to recognize where the supports and resistances are. Now we're going all the way back from 35 bucks, which was multiple times from where it is currently sitting. So we're going to take that. And then we're diving all the way down to around 780. And that's where things get a lot interesting because we don't have much supports from this level. The next support would be 780 from where it is right now. And so the Fibonacci retracements resistances are quite interesting. We're looking at 1422, 1819, 2140, 2461, 2918. So right off the bat, we see that this one is not as useful. And we need to start recognizing the Fibonacci retracements uh, as more of a secondary thing. Now, 780 here shows a significant support line, old good uh, methods in terms of resistances. 1812, current resistance, 859. And a very strong one at 911, another strong one at 988. Then we're looking at 1047, and then we jump up a little to a very, very strong one at 1205, and then at the 1343 level, 1519, and then jumping up to 1684, and a very, very strong one at the 1908 level. And comes to the question to Ed, what do you think about this one? Well, they're in a tough place. Uh, so far, their, their actual expenses, administrative expenses, that is not actually something that I like to see. And also their margins are a little bit small and they need to multiply their entire revenue by around 14 times within a couple of years to meet that estimate of net profitability. And I think that in fact, it will be a very hard thing to do, especially with COVID. And that might actually extend it that not by 2022, where it's going to be net profitable. It perhaps would be by 2023, 2024. Don't get me wrong, I love this company and what they stand for, but I really hope to see some serious changes on the financials, specifically to the administrative costs, and that's where we see things don't really match. And I do hope that they become net profitable sometime soon. Now, currently, it's a bit of a risky investment, but it really looks attractive at 780. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like. Have a wonderful day.